Hello and welcome to another episode of Chatting with the Cardinals. I'm your host, Cooper Welch, and joining me as always, once again, is my co-host, John Washington. Today, we're going to sit down and talk with one of the uh, student-athletes probably most affected by this COVID-19 thing, uh, one of our star basketball players, TJ Atwood. Thank you so much for joining us today, TJ. Uh, thanks for having me. And we're going to talk to him, of course, about the impact of the coronavirus cutting short the Southern Conference tournament. And of course, we'll always have those uh, kind of fun questions to wrap up the day. So let's just get right into it. TJ, first, tell us about uh, what was going through your mind during the, the Southern Conference tournament. You know, first you heard that uh, some conferences weren't doing a tournament, um, that there was a chance March Madness may not happen, uh, all sorts of things, all in the midst of you trying to hopefully guide your team to a, a second or third or even championship round appearance. So talk to us uh, through those days for you. Um, well, it, it all just it all just snowballed. It got worse every day, you know, uh, sadly. Uh, we was just, you know, trying not to think about it too much, but, you know, just – doing what we can to get ready for the next game, next practice, you know, thinking about, you know, all the positives, not trying to, you know, think about the worst thing that could happen. Uh, yeah. You know, eventually all of that did happen, but, you know, we just, you know, we just stay focused and we just trying to just look forward to, you know, the next game. Um, like I say, uh, uh, it was depleted, disappointing feeling, you know, especially because I didn't want it in that way, but, uh, you know, everything happens for a reason, I feel like, and I'm a sole believer in that. So it may not have ended where I wanted it to, but I, I feel like feel like me saying, me and VJ saying that we ended our college careers on a win, and I uh, feel like that's a pretty good way to go. Yeah, absolutely. And it was a, a big win, uh, blowing out our biggest rival, the Battle of the Border Series, McNeese, uh, in a huge way, especially after that uh, tough, very, very tough, uh, small loss at home to them in the season finale. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so talk to us through, uh, you know, how you felt immediately after that game. I mean, you, you ended on a, on a high note, like you said, with a huge win over McNeese. Um, and how does it feel to end it that way with a, with a big win over a conference rival? Man, uh, just felt, just felt great afterwards. You know, I, I, I feel like that was the most focused and uh, the hardest we played maybe all season, you know. And to say we we really made up for that loss at home, uh, I I really think that was that was key for us. And I think we were just hit, hitting our stride again. You know, we may have had three more games to play, but we were definitely one of the most dangerous teams in the in the tournament. But uh, you know, teams were already watching out for us, and to get that game back in the first round. Just gave us a whole lot of confidence, getting us ready for the next game. That eventually didn't happen, but you know, like I say, things happen for a reason. So, yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, you ended your note, uh, your season, your senior season, on a, a high note as well, getting second team All Conference, and uh, we really appreciate all that you've done for Lamar University. Uh, and we just wanted to say to you, thank you for all that you did for us. Thank and you, uh, uh, much appreciated. Uh, very blessed, even you know, being in this position. Not many people can say they they did what I did, and uh, you know, I just tried to look for everything that it was worth. Absolutely. Well, what are your plans for the future look like now? Um, I know when we talked with uh, head coach Tick Price during his interview, he said you know he's already receiving calls for both you and VJ. Um, but I, I assume you want to keep playing basketball as long as you can. Yeah, most definitely. Um, I still I still want to play. Uh, I, I feel like I still have a lot of good years left in me. I want to been playing for a long time now, and I feel like playing at the highest level is the ultimate goal for me, no matter where I'm at. Um, I feel like I want to do that and be able to help provide for my family. You know, uh, they've been supporting me through all these years of me playing, watching me play out here. So I feel like me playing at the highest level and being able to try to take care of them, I feel like it's the ultimate goal. And I feel like, you know, it doesn't get any better than that because at some point it's bigger than basketball. TJ, Absolutely. being from Beaumont, can you just kind of talk about 
how it was to play for your hometown. I mean, for all these years and your family, um, you know, being in town, being able to see you play at home, just kind of that experience a little bit. Um, it, it was a great feeling, man. It was a different adrenaline rush every time, you know. Uh, I feel like playing at home just gave me a, a different kind of vibe, a different kind of energy. Uh, you know, every, every time we scored, got a defensive stop, every time the crowd was cheering us on, you know, it, it just it just felt great, and it felt even it felt even better just knowing that I that I grew up here all my life, and for me to make it to this level, and for me to for people to come and see me at that level and perform is, I feel like it just comes full circle, and it just again I'm just so thankful to be able to do that because not a lot of people can say they grew up in the same city their whole lives and play at the college that they uh in the city that they grew up in. Absolutely, yeah. So, you know, your, your season is, is now over, unfortunately, but what would you say to um, the guys that will be seniors next year and to the, you know, the kids that are coming here, the student athletes that will be coming here as recruits, uh, what would you say to them, your, your biggest piece of advice for succeeding in basketball at Lamar University? Um, well, if they didn't have any motivation to keep going for next season, they definitely have all the motivation they need now. But uh, mm -hmm. I think that the, the number one thing I tell them is, uh, you know, nothing is promised from here on out is no mm -hmm. tomorrow. They don't have an extra year to waste, no extra time to wait, you know, play each and every game, every play, like it's the very last because one game it will be. And I know they don't want to leave any regrets on the table. So that's what I feel like I did. And I hope they do the same thing. Yeah. Well, are there any special lessons that you've learned in this uh, COVID-19 time when you're, you know, you, you can't play basketball now and you're uh, stuck social distancing at home? Uh, what are some of the things you've learned about life during this time? Um. Well, I, I just feel like, uh, you know, with all, with all the things going on around the world, not just in the United States, all around the world, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like it's putting people on notice who weren't really careful about doing the simple stuff like washing their hands, you know, uh, not touching their face and doing all of this, you know, other stuff that can easily cause diseases and uh, easily get other people sick as well as yourself, even though it may not affect you like other people has, you know, it, it, it's still a good thing to know, I mean, to not, not do those type of things and, you know, mm -hmm. keep up, keep up with all that, all that kind of stuff each and every day, you know, not for your sake, but for everybody else, because, it's just so many people who's lost their lives over this and it can be prevented so easily, especially when all we have to do is, you know, stand side for a little bit and stay away from all this until it all clears out. Yeah, that's a very good answer. All right. Well, let's switch to some of the easier stuff now. Um, first, I know everybody's stocked up on something right now. Um, you know, people have been taking advantage of toilet paper, uh, paper towels, soaps, all that kind of stuff. But they've also uh, hoarded up on some other surprising things. Uh, you know, we said, Marco Bourne said that he just had to have some Nutella in his house. Uh, Tick said he had to have ice cream of some sort. What's that one guilty pleasure that you just had to have at your house to get through this? Man, I, I feel bad for you for saying this, yo. <laughs> but, um, like literally any kind of any kind of like small snack or anything like that, whether it's like candy or <laughs> chips or anything like that, I've, I've been trying to get. And uh, I'm just not realizing for the past two, three days, you know, I can't, you know, we're not moving around and being as active as, you know, as we were before all of this started. So not trying to get carried away with it, but I'm definitely kind of been, uh, been craving a lot of snacks, been trying to, you know, ease up on it. But literally like Reese's, Snickers, you know, chips, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. What's been the, all right. uh, the show you've been binging during this time? Yeah. In our shows, I guess you could have more than one. But. Man, uh, I can't, I can't even really, can't even really give you one because I, I have been inside a lot. I've been watching a lot of different stuff on Netflix. You know, I, something seems interesting when I look at it and, you know, 10, 15 minutes later, I'm like, why am I watching this? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, like, why am I watching this? But uh, it's just been all different kinds of stuff. I had all the time in the world, you know, to watch different kind of shows and movies on Netflix. But uh, 
Yeah, it's been crazy. I've never watched Netflix and Hulu so much within the past <laughs> week or two. <laughs> are you a Are you a gamer too? Do you play games, video games at all? Oh yeah, definitely. I uh, been playing two K and Fortnite a lot, especially. Uh, been playing my brother, some of my teammates. You know, I I never played the game this much. You know, for this long, <laughs> day after day, neither. So I just. I'm really just starting to feel like a bum each and each and every day as they go on, which you know, uh, I still go outside and and do whatever kind of workout you know to keep me active whenever I can, you know. Yeah, well, what's your favorite uh, team to play as in 2K, or who's your guy? Who's your pro athlete? Man, um, it's hard to go against LeBron, you know. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I probably have to say him in the Lakers because that's my favorite player of all time. So I. Yeah, I probably have to pick him, but most of the time I play my career for the uh, for the majority. Okay, you, so you pick uh, the Lakers if you're uh, playing online, then. Yeah, definitely. Gotcha. As a player, do you kind of is LeBron the person that you kind of model your style after when you go on the court? Uh, yeah, definitely. I've been like I said, I've been watching him for years, and he's my favorite player, and um, want to be you know very similar to him in the way I play because just like him. I'm not just a, you know, my first thought isn't a score the ball, to pass and get other people involved, rebound, uh, you know, play defense and play off of other people, you know, and just try to be a leader and and be good at every, almost every facet of the game to where we have you no know, weaknesses and be very hard to stop and it's be very hard for people, you know, not to play you. Yeah. Well, we noticed that, um, you know, over your Lamar career, you've really improved your game by like leaps and bounds from when you started as uh, a freshman here. Talk about, um, you know, some of the lessons you learned and, and some of the things that uh, Coach Price and, and others got you to do to change, to to make your game so much better, to get you to second team all conference this last year. Well, after my freshman year, you know, I, I feel like it all started with Wow, you know, I knew that was a game when I came here and started playing under Coach Price. I just, it was a whole nother different level, you know, a whole nother mm-hmm. different intensity. And he used to always say, um, you can tell, you, you can, you can, you can tell um, how a man's soul is by the way he plays defense. So mm-hmm. from the point when he told me that from here on out, you know, I've taken that to heart and uh, I've tried to make that one of the best things in my game and how hard and how how good I am on the defensive end. Okay. All right, TJ, we have just one more question for you today. Um, you know, you're a Beaumont native. You've seen all the things that this area has gone through. Uh, Harvey, Amelda, um, if you go back further, Rita, uh, and now this. And, you know, we've always come back. Lamar has always come back. Um, we went from a, a really bad enrollment number right after Harvey to record setting, you know, right before Imelda. Uh, so just talk to us about the resiliency of Southeast Texas and then Lamar University specifically. Uh, well, one thing I can say is uh, everybody in the Golden Triangle have stuck together since, since I've, you know, since I've been out here, they've always stuck together and been there for each other, no matter how bad situation may have gotten. You know, it's, it's always gotten better and people have always helped each other out because, you know, we're not like a big community or anything like that. We're a small community where everybody knows each other and everybody grew up around each other. Everybody knows each other's, you know, ancestors and things like that. So we've always stuck together and um, been, with, been, through, been with each other through all the hard times. And that's only made us stronger over the years. And sports, especially basketball and football, has been one of the things that's brought us even closer together. Mm-hmm. all right well thank you so much for joining us today tj we really appreciate it thank you for having me again it was nice all right and that was uh another episode of chatting with the cardinals we hope you enjoyed your time with us today and uh, just another reminder please keep washing those hands and stay inside mm-hmm.